Hello, everyone. Thank you to the organizers for inviting me to this workshop. My name is Kyungjin uh, KJ Zhang. I'm Vice President of Technology Implementation and Field Science at Emulate. It is my pleasure today to speak about species leadership to assess cross-species drug toxicity and human relevance. I hope you all enjoy this presentation. Let's take a look at current drug discovery and development pipeline. Approximately nine out of every 10 drug candidates fail to receive regulatory approval. This high attrition rate of clinical trials contributes substantially to the inefficiency of the drug development cycle. This is because preclinical models are fundamentally inefficient to predict human response. Especially within the drug safety area, among other organs, liver toxicity is a leading cause for drug failure in the clinic and from the market. This poor prediction in human response is due to poor preclinical to clinical translation. That is, animal studies fail to predict human response. A recent pharmaceutical industry survey from the top reference uh, in the bottom showed low concordance of DILI between human and animals. Specifically, only 33% for rats, 27% for dogs, and 50% for monkeys. Therefore, there is a clear need for a next generation human-based in vitro model that can better recapitulate human response to drugs. And so this is where organ chip come in. We want to offer this technology as a next generation platform, as a window into human biology to provide more predictive platform to study human physiology and diseases. Here are some examples of our scientific publication leveraging organ chip technologies. Specifically in 2019, we published a paper in Science Translational Medicine showcasing how species specific liver chips were able to more accurately predict the toxicity in vivo and detect various mechanisms of toxicity from the chips. Here is our liver chip. In this cross-sectional view, you can see different cell types lined up in this dual channel chip uh, separated by porous membrane. Primary hepatocytes are cultured in the upper channel in between ECM layers. We have around 50,000 hepatocytes in each chip. And non-parenchymal cells, liver sinusoidal endothelial cell, kufer, and cell A cells are cultured in the lower channel. These cells can interact across the porous membrane. Then to uh, provide more physiologically relevant dynamic environment, we apply flow in both channels within our instrument called ZOE. This is unidirectional flow, and we can flow two different media continuously within the chip. This allows providing fresh nutrient to the cell, flowing dosing media in the channels, and collect affluent samples uh, in a straightforward way based on the set flow rate, which can be adjusted from zero to 1,000 microliter per hour in the system. We began building the liver chip from a simple basic configuration, which is a co-culture in the top right. Then added complexity by adding resident immune cell kufer and hepatic cell A cells to recapitulate physiological development, cell configuration and structure like our body, as you can see in the left image. We characterize the co-culture liver chip containing hepatocytes and LSEC for three species uh, models first. After two weeks in culture, you can see stereotypical hepatocyte morphology and bioconolicular network based on the transporter MRP2 efflux assay using CDFDA in all three species hepatocytes in the liver chip system. However, the same cells 
culture in the static 2D sandwich culture fail to maintain healthy morphology and bicondylicular formation, which is well-known limitation of the 2D hepatocyte culture for long-term study. We also further confirmed characteristic branched bicondylicular network using MRP2 transporter staining for hepatocytes. And selective sinusoidal endothelial cell marker, multifunctional scavenger receptor stabilin one staining for LSEX for all species models after two weeks in culture. Then we assess the liver specific functions from the species liver chips. We measured the secretion of albumin and urea, and we compared the results from the chip with the same species hepatocytes cultured in the 2D static sandwich culture. These studies show that all species chips maintained much higher amount of albumin and urea production compared to conventional sandwich monoculture plates. Also the albumin level between day seven and 14 from the human liver chip was very close to that estimated from humans in vivo, which is 50 microgram per day per million cells using in vitro to in vivo extrapolation uh, techniques. We further evaluated the physiologic relevance of the drug metabolizing capacity of the liver chip. We measured the activity of these three major C450 isoforms, CIF1A, 2B, and 3A using prototypical probe substrate. Similar to albumin urea data, CIF activity in the human rat and dog liver chips were maintained much higher level over the 14 days of culture compared to the 2D static uh, culture plate. Also, we included day zero freshly sold or freshly isolated hepatocyte condition, which are the gold standard model currently used by pharma researchers. But this condition only can go very short period of time in suspension format. And these levels were quite compatible to the data from the liver chip from two weeks in culture duration. Then further characterization for kufir and stellate -like cells were also performed. Phagocytotic activity for kufir cells were tested using latex first and beads. We confirmed that these beads were engulfed by the kufir cell. And kufir marker CD68 positive staining was also confirmed from the uh, triculture liver chip. For the stellate -like cells, the goal is keeping them in a mostly quiescent stage or low level of activation in a normal condition. Then when we activated them, for example, by, uh, by treating TGF beta one for 48 hours, we can see the activation compared to the untreated condition based on the activation marker, our posthumous muscle actin staining from the quadriculture system. So after this uh, characterization of the liver chip, we use this liver chip for drug toxicity testing and species comparison. For the compound dosing experiment, we can add compounds in both channels or either top or bottom channel under flow. Then drug transport, metabolism, various reactions with the cell can happen inside of the chip. The Liberty publication that I mentioned earlier covers these various phenotypes of delay response in detail. And I will show you three example data from a collaboration with J&J &J, uh, in this presentation. First example is Bosentan. Bosentan is a, a dual endothelial receptor antagonist that causes liver toxicity in humans specifically. No mechanism of toxicity of bosentan is inhibition of BCEP transporter, causing bile salt accumulation and inducing cholestasis in humans. When we treated bosentan in three species co-culture liver chip, we saw a clear toxicity response in human liver chip based on this albumin secretion data. IC50 from human liver chip was 10 micromole 
which was very close to plasma concentration of bosentan, 7.4 micromole, that associated with Dili in humans. Then a milder effect in albumin secretion was observed in dog liver chips, but not in rat liver chips. This correlates with in vivo finding based on the FDA IND report in which transient in, uh, injury response at high dose group only in dog studies, but not in rat studies. So overall, we observed very nice correlation of response between the species liver chips and in vivo studies. Also, I want to highlight that baseline of albumin level uh, in this uh, graph were much higher. Also physiological development level in the chip compared to 2D conventional culture. Therefore, there was a large window to capture this type of toxicity response with higher sensitivity in the chip system. Then we tested whether we could detect the mechanism of toxicity of bosentan using the human liver chip. So in control condition, CLF, which is b sulfate, and uh, CDFDA uh, MRP2 sulfate were effluxed out uh, to bioconoliculi area as expected. However, when they were inhibited by the drug, in this case, bosentan, you can see intracellular accumulation of these dyes. And this is consistent with the known mechanism of uh, hepatotoxicity of bosentan in humans. And not only transport activities, but BCEP protein and mRNA levels were also measured and quantified. This highlights the advantage of the liver chip in integrating mechanisms of action to functional outcome in the same model. Next two examples are the opposite case, uh, where compounds were discontinued due to liver toxicity from preclinical species before testing in humans because of uncertainties on the clinical translation of these findings. A JNJ a proprietary compound, JNJK, was discontinued because of liver toxicity, fibrosis in rats. You can see increased alpha sumus muscle actin staining within stellate cell from rat in vivo study. These findings were associated with chronic inflammation of portal area and decrease in albumin with no changes in transaminase level in rats. First, we tested JNJK uh, from 3 to 30 micromole, which covers CMAX concentration from rats uh, in the rat quadricultural liver chip. Then exactly the same responses, increase in alpha uh, sumus muscle lectin expression and decrease in albumin were detected in the rat liver chip. But when we tested the same concentration of JNJK in the human liver chip, even when extended for 14 days of treatment, it did not produce the same responses as we saw in rats or rat liver chips. These results suggest a potential species differences of JNJK between rats and humans. This compound might have been safe in humans. Next is another JNJ proprietary compound, JNJG. This was also discontinued from preclinical dog studies. Dog in vivo findings for these compounds were hepatocellular necrosis, portal fibrosis, and biliary hyperplasia, and elevation of ALT and AST. When we tested this drug in quadricultural dog liver chip with in vivo relevant concentration range, we also observed quite significant and acute toxicity based on the similar readouts, ALT, AST, albumin, and GLDH. Then we also tested this drug in the human quadricultural liver chip, but slightly higher concentration range. And injury responses were detected mostly at the highest concentration in the human liver chip. And albumin was more sensitive marker in this case. So JNJG toxicity was slightly more potent in dog liver chip than human liver chip, but the liver toxicity could have occurred in humans if it was progressed into clinical trials based on this data. 
In conclusion, species leadership closely emulated the results from in vivo at clinical, at clinical development concentration from various studies. This liberative technology can be used to predict hepatotoxicities, human risk assessment, mechanistic investigation, and biomarker discovery, and provide insights into more complex biological questions. Hopefully this technology can contribute to reducing and eventually replacing animal testing soon. A huge thank to my colleagues at Emulate who have been in this meaningful uh, journey, making a new era in human health together. And a special thank to Dr. Monica Otieno and Professor Don Ingber. Thank you very much, everyone.